scared of you motherfuckers. I'm gonna tell you something straight off the motherfucking press. I ain't coming for no foolishness. Um, so I found this rare video of Patrice. Um, he's doing stand up in a comedy club with like five people in the crowd. And um, even though the sound's a little bit fucked up, it's a really good insight into like his philosophy on comedy, honesty, and stuff like that. Um, it, it was filmed by his friend Jeffrey, uh, the guy, one of the guys he did the Black Phillip show with. So just check it out and uh, let me know how you like it. Once you, got, once you got what you thought to be was real, you said, why are you picking on me? I wasn't picking on you. This is what I mean. It, it was just an honest, we got an honest thing going back and forth a little bit, but it turned, I turned into the evil dude. But really, I'm not. But that's where, how I came up here, that's what I want to do in, in the, my vision, is to flush that out. It's to flush out honesty. Because I'm, my curse is I can pick out bullshit quickly. And a lot of people in this game, they enjoy bullshit. Long as I, I was on parole. I learned this in Boston being on parole. <laughs> that society don't give a fuck how you really feel. Long as you smile. As long as you like, you know, I went in there after I got out of jail and shit, walking up to the parole guy, like all oh, fucking like fuck you, fuck your mother. <laughs> And then one day, I just went in there and I was tired of doing that because he made life miserable. And I was like, hello, how are you? But I still was like, fuck you, fuck your mother. And then he started helping me out and started doing things and started being nice to me because of my. And I can't even live like that. I try to. I swear to God, I try to. I wish I could just go, really? I, this is what I should have did. You want to hit the lottery for your dreams? Wow! God bless you. <laughs> but being a beautiful woman, and this is not what my show has to do with the radio show, is that once it gets to level two, then it becomes like, whoa. You're a big dude, and I know you get people going, whoa. Now, I'm a big dude, and I see your face, and I, I don't see, oh, he's a mean, big motherfucker. I see what I know. You know, there's nothing coming off you evil. But you big motherfucker, so if you say something big motherfucker type, <laughs> whoa, watch out. He's just he's just big and mean. And that makes you big and mean. When people do that. Like that made me big and meaner. That bullshit. Ah! And, I, and it's not personal. It's just, it's just I wanna live some truth. A little bit of truth. And sometimes truth is bitter. Why don't you, it's like medicine. Why don't people want to deal with the truth now so that later you don't have to put, man, I know you know some truth that when you was, yeah, I'm not going to assume you age, but you look seasoned. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a bullshit way of saying not 20. But there's some things at 20 that you know you lived, and you go, shit, I did different things when I was 20 than you do now. And a lot of that had to do with honesty. I was a lying motherfucker at 20. <laughs> you know, I mean, a lot of the stuff that I'm saying, man, is like, and I do this on stage, like if somebody comes on stage, I like to come on stage, believe it or not, and say something so fucked up just to make the crowd go, oh shit, wait a minute. <laughs> 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 that was a uh, reality? Is that it? Yeah. Yeah. Fuck up. You <laughs> <laughs> get a couple people to just be shocked into, wait a minute, we was just living this existence, and I'm like, oh, I can't do that. So let me say something real fucked up. So that the crowd will go, oh shit, sit down, then I can build them back up into what I felt like. Which is a crowd for honest people. You know, a crowd for honest people. And comedy to me is honesty, but it can't be. That, like, Jeffrey, I think for like this type of workshop mm -hmm. or the program, 
it should be leveled, like a dude that's been born in three years. Because it's almost closer to somebody that's thinking about doing it, as opposed to, the, like say if you got me, Nick DiPaolo, Colin, Quinn, uh, Todd Lynn to come in, right? Mm -hmm. By the end of the day, people go, fuck that, I'm just going, I'm going to work in a library. <laughs> <laughs> because people throw around the word bitter, but we're not bitter. I know I'm not bitter. I just want to live my life in the realm of comedy the way I want to. And it's very difficult. That's why I come up like, ah, ugh. I watch comedy shows, I watch Last Comedy Stand, ugh. As a comic, mm. ugh. I watch, but some of them watch that comedy and go, oh, this is great, I want to do comedy. Some people watch Byron Allen's show that comes on at about 3 in the morning. Comics on Leash. Oh! Oh! Red Eye. Come on about 3 in the morning. Ah! What? But that's my shit of going, of establishing where I want to be, what I want to do in this game. I think I speak like this because so this game is important to me. I, I just I love it, and I gave so much to it to the point where I gave I gave my fucking humor to this game. Mm. You see me do when I grew up. I was the funniest motherfucker <laughs> in my twenty five mile radius. That's what I was known for being funny. Being funny, I had a jump shot. And this game, I gotta come up here like, I could never be that funny to you guys because it's like, I would have to meet you personally. I'd have to get to know you. I'd have to get to know you. I'd get to know you. You know? I'd have to get to know you. Get to know you. And then you go, oh, that's no funny. So you go, oh, my man. Oh, that dude. That dude is funny. Somebody would go like this. This is not funny. This is dead. I'm like, no, I didn't know that. Dude, I know his essence, man. I know his life. That's why I mean about being righteous, man. Because again, I'm not picking on you, but we did have an exchange about ten minutes ago. <laughs> That's been the story of my life in the game. Now imagine if I come in and I'm doing me, and I know I do the job, and I know I'm funny, and I know people tell me I'm funny, and I come in and. My existence is not her existence. There's, there's a rule book of how to behave. So I come and say, hey, what's happening? How you doing? And let's say, let's say Jeffrey showed me this, the news thing, and, and he's a big time producer. And I sit in the room, he shows me that. And he goes, this is what I think is funny. And I'm sitting there, and he's the guy that signs the checks. And I can't go, that was some horseshit. <laughs> <laughs> and we still can't work together. That's an injustice, because that's how we work together on the video. Jeffrey believes in, Jeffrey has an aura thing, and I'm always trying to crack holes in it, because I'm like, that's some bullshit. <laughs> but at the same time, it's righteous. It's not bullshit. And I got some shit where people go, oh, he's just a teddy bear. Oh, he's just a teddy I'm going, sometimes, sometimes I'm fucked up. And I try to look at that and deeply explore. Somebody said to me, Patrice, you're such and such a so and so. I would go, I know, because I look in the mirror and strip myself down all the time. But they get literally, but they get figuratively. I look at myself naked and go, holy shit. <laughs> I'm a mess. So I don't walk around. I walk around with confidence like I got a six pack. You know what I'm saying? If I walk around with that kind of confidence and somebody tries to pick me down by going, you're fat! I go, I know. <laughs> yeah, but I, I saw that was trying to destroy my life. That means there's something about your life that's missing. That means there's something that's going on that you're not staring in the mirror and saying to yourself, I am bullshit. I am bullshit. And those are the people I get along with. Mm. The people that look in the mirror and don't see nothing wrong. <laughs> liars! I fucking hate liars! So what I'm saying in terms of this program, 
Sorry. The program. Like, look, a lot of people in life, this is just interesting to me right now. A lot of people in life are afraid of. No, you. Oh, afraid of me. Literally. And you know that. <laughs> Literally, I know that. And, and here's the thing, let's not try to, let's not talk about if that's the fact, when we both know that's the fact, that you are scary to the average muscle that don't know. You're about what, six feet? Six feet of black woman attitude. No attitude, black woman. Exactly. Plenty of attitude. Yeah. I'm gonna tell you why. But you just told me with attitude, no attitude. No attitude. You gotta be like, hold up, no problem. <laughs> I'm not scared of that shit. You missed our But the thing, the thing is, when I talk about living lies, I know if you working at Hunter College, you deal with people that go, uh oh, watch out. This is what we have to do. You don't deal with anybody going, ah. And no offense, no offense, no one has told you to shut up. Oh, Ever. Oh, you you are you lying? Maybe your dad is with this. I got this. Who told you to shut up before? Well, they don't tell me. Of course they don't! They don't. <laughs> Oh, y'all are a cop, bad cop. And I don't want you. <laughs> this is what I'm saying, dude. This is a beautiful thing. I will never let you not do you. But you gotta accept, accept that doing me could inflict on you doing you without you going, hey, don't do you. You know what I'm saying? So I'm saying, do you. I think it's real, don't get me wrong. I'm saying that the way I am, I'm, I'm a confrontational guy. So the, when you do you, you gotta understand that sometimes when you're doing you, someone's allowing you to do you. And to respect that. To respect that. Respect what people who are trying to live this honesty thing is doing. You know what I mean? Just because you might have the confidence doesn't mean you have the honesty. And I'm not saying you don't. I'm saying in general, since you're here. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I like my ass her who's getting ready to going up like, why would you do comedy? Because I would look at beautiful women that want to do comedy and go, what? And there's nothing wrong with just saying, well, this is just like a woman going, you go, hey, how old are you? And a woman doesn't tell her age. <laughs> and phony motherfuckers just go, all right, you want to some more. But I go, look, I challenge not to make you say the age, but I just go, why don't you? Why don't you? Have a reason for your existence. Have a a, a hypothesis, have a philosophy. Why do you do what you do? Because most, I know he does. I, I tell you that, because he's a big dude, he has to know consequences, he has to think, he has to do certain things. That's why, like on the radio, I. T Me and Jeffrey do the show. It's about, it's not about relationships with boys, it's about philosophical relation between men. It's how. I feel about women how he feels about women. Some people say I hate women. Oh. I love women. Mm -hmm. That's why it seems like I hate them. You can't love something without hating. Hate is the opposite of love. So when I come up and I'm passionate and seeming hateful of something, it's because I want to love it. If I don't give a shit, I don't give a shit. <laughs> it, it, it's medicine. It evokes something. That's that's why what I'm doing this business and it, and it evolved. By the way, it, it went from you know, look, don't get me wrong. I tap danced. I tell you a story about Aspen, Colorado. I don't know if you know about Aspen Comedy Festival. Aspen used to be the biggest. It used to be the biggest comedy festival. Well, it's not, it's not anymore. But I went there about in my seven days here doing it. I got on stage and I said, look, I'm gonna fucking get me a deal. I'm gonna get money. I'm gonna do what I have to do to get this money. 
And I mean, tap like muffin. I mean, really smile and cheese and everything against my spirit. Afterwards, I didn't get nothing. And I was uh, depressed. I mean, super depressed. I never been depressed like a white person depressed. Like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know suicide. I was really like, you know, had no money. Had, uh, that's when um, 99 cent hamburgers came out. So I was like, had three 99 cent hamburgers just sitting on my stomach, just sad. <laughs> And I realized that, God damn, what the fuck? Yeah, it's not. When you, all you can afford is something that's going to kill you, you know it's killing you. And, and I'm just sitting there like, what am I doing? And I made a conscious decision after that that I'm going to be money to myself, no matter what it takes. Because I know money ain't, money is not all the time happiness. But my thing is, from that moment on, I started going on a different journey because I knew how to do well in the crowd. This place was packed eight years in. I'm coming, standing ovation, blah, blah, blah. I know how to do it, know what to say. Damn. But then I, was, I just feel like, ugh. And I'm surrounded by, ugh. But I'm not anymore. Like, I don't know. In the comedy world, people know me in a, a certain way. And like I know girls and guys that do comedy, like there's a comic, she's tremendously talented. But every single time I get her show, she goes, she does a, a bit about um, dick sucking. Do you suck dick? Dick, you suck dick? You suck dick? <laughs> dick suck dick? Use this as a dick. Dick! And afterwards, we always sit in the room and she'll come in. <laughs> Stop. So a lot of times I'm the worst teacher there is because I'm always going to look at it internally, like this is how you deal with it. And not judgmental, but I, this is how you deal with it because this is how I dealt with it. Stop bullshit. Hey man, how you get on stage? Stop bullshit. Hey man, how do you uh, how do you get your license to drive? My cousin, 23 years old, 24 years old, I'm thinking about getting my license. Shut the fuck up. That's just. <laughs> So I guess that I guess to I guess to end it though for real for real out of all the bullshit I was talking is stop bullshit. Whatever you want to do, whatever you think about, like man, I want to be the president of Nicaragua or wherever you're from, and or I want to do what I want to do. I want to do whatever I want to do. If somebody said this, I want to do this. I want to do that. Is stop bullshit. Because you're going to talk yourself out of it tomorrow or the day after. You're looking for somebody like me to go, you can do it. I don't give a fuck about you. I don't think you can do it. I don't know. You don't have no belief in it. No, they're laughing too. None. So do it. Can we take a question? Uh, does anybody have a question? Yeah, I have a question. What okay. do you, since you, oh, you're talking about doing comedy and when comedians, they get off, they feel all depressed and sad after. What, what kind of fulfillment do you get out of doing comedy? Oh, but I don't feel depressed and sad anymore. So you don't? Why? Because I'm, I say things that I, I don't, at the end go, I should have said that, or I don't feel like I lied at the end of the show. Mm -hmm. And the people that get depressed feel like they lied because they're in this for the money. And I'm not judging them. Shit, I'm in this for the money. But money is fourth dairy and fifth dairy, if that makes sense. I gotta figure out how to stay in this for the rest of my life, because this is all I got. I don't have nothing to fall back on. Matter of fact, comedy, I've been doing it so long, it's become the thing to fall back on. Now, I'm striving to go do TV and radio and movies. Comedy is my thing I got to fall back on when shit ain't right. So, I learned how to love it. I realized when I first started, like right now, this is comedy. Not a laughing sight. One person, you can feel her get up and go, ah, boom. You can feel energy. It's like, ah, oh. you can feel it. That's comedy. Comedy is at one with everybody. 
you know, together. It's not how I can use you. If you watch um, the Grammys and all that shit, why that's shitty is because people have taken out the actual togetherness with the crowd. They use, they put the business in the front and they put the people that love them in the back so that they can use the love for the people to impress Puffy. So that these people go, whoa! And it's like, look, Puffy, can I get that deal? Or what is that? <laughs> That's what I learned when I first started. This is kind of when I first started. A couple of girls looking at me like, I don't get it. Um, <laughs> dude, like, I do get it, I think. Good. Hmm. Yeah. That's comedy. But to get to the level I am, to answer your question, you haven't been doing it years to where you go, ugh, I'm tired of using the people to get to the next level. That comes with age. So why don't I feel the pressure? Because I don't lie no more. I used to lie. I used to be scared to see a face that wasn't laughing in the audience. But I think it's love, especially if you can make somebody mad. If you make somebody mad, you can make them love you. That means they they getting better. <laughs> that sickness is coming. Up. <laughs> so yeah, that's why. I mean, you know. You shouldn't give a fuck what somebody else does. But it's it's a natural I mean, naturally. When you watch a comic that stinks, I should be happy about that. But what it is is not only which that and that's a good thing you do, is if you watch a com a DJ that stinks to you, and you're like, what you're really doing is going, I know I got more than this dude. And you look at him and he's the crowd is like, uh, you look at the crowd and go, fuck y'all, y'all. Dancing that shit, that bullshit, that bullshit. It's your own, your own evil that's fucking with you. You gotta get righteous. And again, when I say righteous, I don't mean God. Some people don't believe in God. I mean, do you and believe in it? It's gonna be hard. You're gonna be sitting there like, oh, is doing me worth it? Doing other people. Look like it's better. <laughs> I'm gonna do them. But then you'll be like, I'm, you'll be crying on wow. And you'll be like, doing your bullshit. But not even your bullshit, someone else's bullshit. You feel me? So you gotta look at that and go, he does what he does, but then you wouldn't be so upset if you had a belief system. Your own belief system. And then and ride on that. You haven't developed that. What are you, 21, 22? You, gotta, you ain't got no belief system, man. You gotta earn a belief system, develop something, you go, I believe in that. And how do you believe in that? Because I've done field research, Jack. How I feel about women in relationships? Shit. I've had 20 girlfriends. I've been to four third world countries. And I've invested in my feelings. Like, hold up, why do I feel like, see, I never run from how I feel. That's why I can say that with ease and jealousy, because I've gone, why am I so upset about this motherfucker doing him? Because I'm jealous and I'm angry and I feel like I'm better. So if I feel like I'm better, I gotta get a better system. So I can believe in that shit. So you don't believe in nothing. But DJ, some people go, I wanna be famous. What does that even fucking mean? That's the vaguest thing I've ever heard. I want to be famous and rich. How? Why? Well, where? Who? What? Life is an alphabet, man. I think life is chronological. I'm trying to jump. Life is chronological. It, or chronological is numbers, but, but alphabetical. A to Z. A is life, Z is death. You might get rich tomorrow. That is letter M. You, you'll live that I am, but you skipped over B, C, D, E, F, G. You don't know how to live that I am. So you'll be rich, you'll be fucked, because you got to go back to B to learn how to live in F. And you got to do that. You can't be in a rush to go and just be this DJ guy, because you don't know where he's living in his alphabetical order of life. I know not to fuck with cops, because I got hit by one. That teach me how to not get beat up by a cop. Some people don't know how to get beat up by a cop because they don't know they never did it. Never been challenged. So when you see a DJ, 
DJ doing things, you go do you. Because you're living your life. <laughs>